Good morning. The topic today related to price, weight, price and consumer perception. How do consumer make a decision to buy something rely on a price? But before going to that story, let know my background as usual, in case you are new, come to watch my clip. I was a previous PhD student in finance banking, course for two years from Taiwan, a master degree in master business administration from Thailand, bachelor degree in finance banking from Thailand. Okay. Some time I might translate to Thai to Khmer, but today most of the time I speak in English. Okay, so go deep to the topic. Let me review some theory related to the service quality. Okay, so the first framework, five famous scholars, is Grundrus. Okay. If you look at his framework, what does Grundrus define service quality? So we have the word expected service and the perceived service. So in order to get the perceived service quality, it must be come from image. How to get your business have a good image in the eye of customer? You have to have a technical quality and a functional quality. A good technical quality, a good functional quality. What is a technical quality? So he defined a technical quality mean what consumer receive as the result of interaction with a service firm. This is that customer expect. That's called technical service. And another word is say the functional service. The functional service is the process, which means how a technical service received by a customer, the result of the service. If you have two types of them good, so your company or your business have a good image in the eye of the customer. And from the good image, and then you will get perceived service quality. That the famous scholar, the Nordic or generic model say, okay, he was a European people. Okay. Now come to the gap model. The gap model, we have price gap, okay, price gap. That talking about the shortage of the service or the lack of service or the mistake of the service or the weakness of the service. That's called the gap theory that was produced by Paras Suraman. He is a American Jewish scholar. He also a famous scholar in doing a service quality. So those two scholars, remember them. Every, every research refer to his research. Grunrus and Parasuraman. So what about the gap of Parasuraman talking about? The gap, okay? If you look at the gap, we have five gap, okay? What is the gap number one? Now, let me explain you the gap number one. The gap number one. Is a consumer expectation, you will see it in my YouTube, okay? Expectation versus management perception. What happened? Company may not always understand what is necessary to achieve high level of satisfaction. This gap arrives when the service provider fail to deliver what the consumer had expected. It's quite clear in English. So what do you have to do to pick that one? What is the mistake? Pick that mistake. The gap arrived when the service provider failed to deliver what the consumer had expected. This is the gap number one. 
It is also result due to insufficient communication between the two parties and a lack of understanding. The mistake, the weakness of the gap number one. Wait and see in my YouTube, okay? Or Facebook in live. So I don't have time to translate to both language now. So only one language, English. Okay. The second gap. The second gap is the management perception versus service quality specification. Sometimes organizations may have identified what consumer want, but still could not deliver the service accordingly to set a standard due to market condition management in different or resource constraints. The gap arises when there is a comprehension between service in appropriate physical evidence led to poor quality service, or a consumer but inadequately designed service, unsystematic process, or inappropriate physical evidence led to a poor quality service. This is a second gap, weakness. So the gap model raised up in order to show a manager, the owner of the business, or other student let understand the weakness point in the service sector. So we have to go to pick that gap. Now let's move to the third gap. Okay. The third gap over here is a service quality specification versus service delivery. Although those company may have guidelines in customer care, they do not assure quality performance. Employee play the major role in affecting this gap as if the consequence of ambiguity, a role conflict, lack of your fit for supervision, supervision and improper training. This is the gap, the third gap between service quality specification versus service delivery. The fourth gap. The fourth gap is service delivery versus external communication. Oh, my mouth dropped. Let me move on. Okay, this gap might be the result of underlying issue from other gap or the reflex or the reflection of error and misinterpretation. So cannot be blocked directly without removing the previous one. So this is a consequence of the gap number one, the gap number two, number four, becoming to the gap number five. Okay. What is the gap number four? The gap number four is service delivery versus external communication. So what is that? Consumer and the public are highly influenced by the organizational statement through the representative and advertisement. Sometimes you do advertise more than what you have. Organizations sometimes neglect to inform customers about the hidden effort to influence their perception. Companies should avoid the propensity to overpromise or exact generation through false marketing. This is the gap number four. You have to pick that. Tell the truth to customer. Don't cheat customer by doing advertisement. That I see in Cambodia, most of advertise are big, but we get the real thing on the plate is small. It's different to United States. United States, they show advertise small, but when you get, it's bigger than that advertisement picture. This is what talking about the four gap. Don't tell a lie to customer. Don't cheat people by your advertisement. Okay, this is example, the gap of four, we have to be paid. And what about the gap number five? The fifth gap is expected service versus perceived service, the last one. Expected service and perceived service gap. Like uh, you expect that food good, tastes good, but when you eat, it doesn't taste good. So I mean your service fall, your service fail, bad service or bad service quality. The key to ensure service quality is by exceeding or at least meeting the consumer judgment through the contact of service delivery. This gap might be the result of underlying from other gap or reflection of error and misinterpretation. So cannot be blocked directly without removing the previous one. So the fifth gap is the conclusion of the four gap. From 
para sa soroman. That show the gap of service quality that all organizations involved must be paid. So let's move to uh, para sa soroman sub-qual model. Sub-qual means service quality model. The upgrade new one. So he just put the framework in order to good perceive service quality, it must come with your service reliability, responsiveness, empathy, assurance, tangible, and those five factors, effect on expected service, effect on perceived service, and both expected service and perceived service, effect to your perceived service quality, that is the end of the framework. So what is a uh, reliability mean? There are five factors, okay? He update his model to be five factors relating to service quality. Uh, the products must be reliable. Reliability is the dimension with the highest influence on the customer perception of quality. It is increasingly important in the sector like airline as well. So reliability, I mean, trustful to your product. To your food. That's what it means. And the second one is responsibility. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a simply the willingness to provide prompt service in the different situation, a scenario, just like a hotel customer service system. A customer often has a special request, query, or complain. The service provider, especially frontline employee, should be aware and equipped and equipped to respond smartly. This dimension requires the ability to customize, communicate, innovate, and focus on the notion of the flexibility through training. This is the meaning of responsivity. So in order to provide a good service, first you have to rely, you have your service reliability, the second service responsiveness, and the third is empathy. What is the empathy mean? The MC related to individualized attention and care to each customer, making the best effort to see and acknowledge their viewpoint. This is the meaning of empathy. And the last and the next one, assurance, the fourth factor. Assurance is how company build confidence and inspire trust, referring to knowledge and courtesies of personnel and the ability to adapt this method. This dimension is especially crucial for high-risk service due to the uncertainty involved. This is the meaning of assurance. So when you have assurance, the last one is tangible. What is tangible? Tangible are basically physical facility. The whole building, the whole environment in the building, the whole environment in the, in the restaurant. Is it clean? Is it bright? Is it clean? Something like that are basically physical facility, material, and equipment that are multifunctional and represent the organization appearance. That's called tangibility. If you have five of them in a good condition, you will get expected service, you will get perceived service in the same time, and that one helps you to have a good service quality. This is the framework of Parasoroman, its name is Serpquel. It comes from the service quality. Okay, we have five factors important. Now let's move to another Serpquel uh, framework that other author used in his research, extend from the original one. The just moment I explain it is the original one. And if you do the topic related to service quality, it might be related to a specified topic like in hospital, like in telecommunication, in a hotel, etc., etc. You have to identify. Uh, you still get the five item from Parasoroman model just a moment ago. That include tangible, reliability, responsibility, assurance, empathy. That I already read the definition of all uh, specified key term, five key term. Okay, so in tangible here. They refer to up-to-date equipment. Tangible, even you can see, you can touch. So if talking about providing uh, products, the update to equipment, 
like uh, in the hospital just a moment ago, we're talking that the uh, patient complained that uh, equipment are out of date, something like that, because the public, because the government short of money to provide to the public hospital, okay? You have to have up-to-date equipment or in the fast food restaurant, for example, you have to have a, a good condition of coffee machine, of a shaking machine, something like that, in a good condition, okay? So for investing in capital, capital expenditure, it means you invest to buy the machine to produce the product. It break even not more than five years. So after five years, you make a profit from that equipment, or we say in a term, technical term, that say capital expenditure, the money you invest in buying that machine. Shaking machine, copy, shaking, copy machine, et cetera, et cetera. Five years, it only broke, uh, it only break even. So if you see, if the owner watch my clip, please change all the broken equipment out in order to give, provide a good service to customer, not make customer, not let customer down, disappointed. You will lose that customer forever. Okay, if you have a business. And visuality, a planning facility, everywhere, every corner you can see. Well-dressed employee, okay, that's got tangible because employee is a human, okay? Quartus dress or well-dressed employee, facility consistent with the industry. It related to industry. And what about the reliability? This is talking about tangibility. Another author used this model, the original model, to apply in another topic related to industry topic. Reliability, respond with time frame. But for example, like uh, you bought it, it's broken. So the warranty said you can go to get the repair free. So when do you get the repair, do not let them wait 10 days or 20 days. And uh, the next week, bring it to me. It's broken. I need it right now. So why you said another one week? I need to use my phone, something like that. So you have to call back right away. Might be waiting that day, one hour, two hour, like I take my car to the dealer. Too long, two hour. Very fast, one hour and a half. We have to sit over there, wait. But not keep my car here. And three days, next three days come to take it. Uh, what about my car going to work? That related to time frame. Reassuring when problem arise. Reliability, dependable, service delivery at the time promise. That's why Amazon make a lot of money in the United States. Amazon work 24 hours. So when the product or good arrive home, they send to the message, to, to the customer message alert that this time the product will be at your door. So please leave the door open in order to get good product in front of your door because if you put outside, it might be stolen by someone because now the country is poor. Okay, let's move. Accurate record. That's all them refer to reliability. So the already, you know, the word tangible, reliability, responsibility, assurance, embassy might be uh, refer or identify or define according type of topic of your research. For example, like uh, you do research using the Parasoman model in telecommunication, they will identify the tangible in the term of telecommunication, uh, reliability in the term of com uh, telecommunication, so on and so on. The word number three, responsiveness in this study. Inform customer when service will occur. Yes, like I said, yes, a moment. When the product will be arrived, they will send a message. Okay, it will arrive at your door at what time, what time is a drive. Prompt service from employee. Employee willing to have. Employee respond to request. That's called responsiveness. The interaction between employee and customer. Assurance. 
in this topic related to employee are trustworthy. Customer feels safe in the dealing. Employee are polite. Employee have supported to do their job well. So the word assurance most of the time related to employee. Empathy in this study related to firm provide individualized attention. Employee provide individualized attention. For example, like in hospital, equally treatment. Doctor don't care about the poor or the rich, but when come to hospital, they are equal treatment. This is empathy. Employee provide individual attention. Employee understand customer need. Employee have the best interest of the customer in mind. Operate at the convenient hour. So this is the way they apply parasoman service quality in each sector, each business. And you define each word by yourself according to the type or the topic of the study. Next, go into retail service quality that was created by this called hierarchical model by Dapoka. He also a, a famous uh, a famous scholar too in keeping a framework of retail service quality that like uh, the one. Uh, the topic that do a research in Malaysia, retail service quality. Go. In order to get retail service quality, you have five words. You have to fulfill five words. Physical aspect, problem solving, personal interaction, policy, reliability. If you have all five words, good it means you will get retail service quality. See, it related to retail service. So in order to get the first word physical aspect, you have to have appearing good, a convenient physical, a convenient store, a convenient building, appear and look good, decorate well, something like that. That's called good physical aspect. Problem solving, personal interaction, in order to have a good personal interaction, you have to inspire in confident, cautious, helpful from your sales people or from employee. Okay, so your good personal interaction. And what about a policy in that store? Policy. So each department has its own policy. Each company has its own policy. And reliability. Reliability is related to the retail store. I mean, promise, like a, you sell the products on time, if they order online, or doing it right. It means you don't cheat people. If you talk, is it durable? It must be durable, long last, something like that. If you fulfill those things, you will get a good retail service quality. This is the model for service, retail service quality. If students want to do a retail service quality, According to each business, you can use original this model and identify the definition of five key terms, like physical aspect to your business, problem solving to your business, personal interaction in your business, policy in your business, and reliability in your business. Business, I don't know what do you do. Running a restaurant, running a hotel, running apartment for rent, Etc. Etc. So you identify, use the original model, and then adapt it to your own business model. Yeah. Okay. Move on. And the hierarchical model too from Brady and Cronin. There are two famous also. The first one is from uh, Dahoka, 1996, and the second one from Brady and Cronin. They are most famous also talking about the service quality too. Okay, what about the Brady and Cronin? That's very simple. Looks similar to Grand Rules model. So in order to get a good service, you have to have the main keyword three. Interaction quality, still interaction. Interaction quality. The confrontation between customer and employee, sell people. The second one, physical environment. 
the environment in the working place, in the environment in the store, et cetera, et cetera, and outcome quality. If you have three of them, you will get a service quality. And what is interaction quality mean? Interaction quality refer to attitude of the employee, expertise, the skill in selling, in providing service, physical environment quality related to what? Am ambient condition, fresh air, bright light, decorated store, etc. design, design is a decoration. You can see the shopping mall in Cambodia, Aon is the one, another type of uh, design, Cheap mong is another type of design. See, different. Okay. Social factor. Social factor is self person attitude. That's called physical environment quality. If you have those, good. And the last one is outcome quality. Outcome quality mean how customer perceive what they get. Outcome quality, waiting time. See? It focus on waiting time. So time is quite important. Any business, time is quite important. Because in especially in developed, developing country, people are busy. People are busy. So waiting time, less waiting time is the best what they want. Outcome quality related to tangible. Tangible, I mean, I, it only explained from the tangible, right? The physical. The physical of product, the physical of food, something like that. If you have those good, it is called service quality in terms of hierarchical model of Brady and Cronin in 2001. It was published in 2001. Okay, move on. To another, customer satisfaction. In order to get customer satisfaction, we have a framework. You have to have a five word from Grand Rules model, reliability, responsiveness, assurance, empathy, and tangible. Okay, those of them express in service quality. When you have a service quality, you have to have five words just a moment from ground rules model. That cost service quality and the product quality and the price. If you have a reasonable price in the conception of consumer, you have a product quality, you have a service quality, three of them push or make customer satisfaction. We need customer satisfaction, okay? In order to get customer satisfaction, not only service quality, product quality, and the price, but it related to situational factor as well, personal factor. What is situational factor? Situational factor are the external factor coming from the shopping environment when buyer come into contact with the particular visual stimulation, products or promotion that create the unplanned purchases. That's called situational factor too. So customer satisfaction, get from service quality, product quality, and the price, as well as the situational factor, or external factor coming from, or when buyer come into the contact with particular visual stimulation, like a new promotion, something like that. That's called situation factor as well as personal factor. Okay, so what is the, and after customer satisfaction, the framework show that later on you will get a customer loyalty. Okay, so the testimony of the situational factor include five elements. Situational factor include five elements. First, physical surrounding, the building. Working place, social surrounding, people around you, sales person, time, it's still time, okay? Shopper have uh, enough time to purchase, they have time to think. Shopper don't have enough time, for example, shopping cars and 
the pipe, the previous condition in which the consumer enter the shopping surrounding or which result from the shopping surrounding. So you can see in order to get the customer satisfaction, we have a lot of factors, okay? Using a ground rules model first, reliability, responsiveness, assurance, empathy, tangible, create service quality. Service quality, product quality, and the price create customer satisfaction. Customer, customer satisfaction effect by service quality, product quality, the price, and situational factor, like as well personal factor. After that, if they satisfy your product or your service, they will advertise your store from mouth to mouth without payment. So they become your customer lawyer. Customer who advertise your business, your service by themselves, it become customer loyalty. So we need customer loyalty. Come and come again. We see them every day or every three day in our store. That's called customer loyalty. We have to pay attention to customer loyalty because they will advertise for us without payment. Recommend other, other customer by themselves. That's why we need customer loyalty. In order to get customer loyalty, we have to get customer satisfaction. First, so in order to get customer satisfaction, there are a lot of factors. Your service reliability, your product reliability, your service responsiveness, your service assurance, your service empathy, your service tangibility. You got service quality. Service quality produce or produce customer satisfaction. And there are situational factors include to make customer satisfaction happen. After that, you get customer loyalty. Okay? This is the model to get customer satisfaction. That's what we want in every business. Okay. And what about the brand equity framework? The brand equity framework, I mean, you know that smartphone, if you're talking about the cost, it's quite less. But how about you sell to you? More than 1,000, right? Is it because of the brand? So how to create a brand? So this also Akka brand equity model. He identified the brand equity by doing so. So what? Brand loyalty, brand awareness, perceived quality, brand association, and other proprietary brand assets. All of them create the brand equity. Brand equity, okay. And what is the brand equity mean? Provide value to customer by enhancing customer interpretation, processing of information, confident in the purchase decision, use satisfaction as well. Provide value to firm by enhancing efficiency and effectiveness of marketing program, brand loyalty, price margin, brand extension, trade leverage, competitive advantage in order to create brand equity. So come to each point of what it means in the framework. So when in Facebook, you can go to take a look at my YouTube and you will see all the letter, all the framework. Now just listen like all you. What is a brand equity? Brand equity is one of the most important concepts in marketing and develop which can be defined as the overall belief associated with the brand or its total value. It's the definition of brand equity. Okay, Brand equity can also be assumed, assumed to be a customer perspective attached to a brand. Okay, And positive brand equity brings significant value to the organization as they can be transferred among different product lines, increasing sales, revenue, and market share as they become more widely recognized and preferred. Additionally, customers are willing to pay high price for product even when competitors sell for less, and doubling more profit for sale. This is the benefit of brand. Okay, sell in a high price but the cost is less because of the brand. For example, like uh, 
like uh, Levi's jean, like uh, Gucci brand name, Rolls Royce, something like that. What is different with other car? Volvo, Mercedes Benz. They are all safe, but it's cheaper than Rolls Royce, right? Because of the brand. Rolls Royce absolutely used by the top people, by the king of the United States, first of all. But now it is sold to normal people, but they have money. So they can buy Rolls Royce. They can drive Rolls Royce like the king, like the queen. This is the brand creation. The value, the social value, the same car. But because in the name of the king before use, it make that brand selling in expensive price. So that's why when you run a business, think about the brand of your product in the future. Costless, but you make a lot of money from the brand products. Okay, move on. You now you got the meaning of brand equity. Now let's go to a hierarchical brand equity model. In order to get a brand equity model or pyramid, first you have to have brand identity. What is the brand identity? Okay. So they are explain you that, uh, let me see over here. The brand identity stand out by aligning perceived value for consumer to be aware. That's called brand identity. This goal to create brand selling, ensuring perception are recognized. Number one. The second one, building brand meaning through performance, characteristic, and imagery to meet customer need on a social and psychological level. So the brand name of German company is Mercedes Benz. So how to get a brand meaning? Safety first. So you drive a Mercedes Benz, it's more safety to you. And what about Volvo? Volvo define themselves like the Mercedes Benz too. It's safety if you're driving that car. This is step number two mean, building brand meaning through performance. Performance is safety. Okay. Characteristic, perception, and recognize. Building brand meaning through performance, characteristic, and imagery to meet customer need and social and psychological level. Social means, oh, average. When I drive, uh, I want to show the average when I buy a Mercedes Benz or Rolls Royce. Yeah, social status. And move to number three, a brand response. What is the brand response? Step number three, the brand response in accordance of consumer judgment about category like brand superiority, credibility, and quality. This is called brand response related to credibility, quality, and superiority. I'm the best when I drive this car, something like that. Okay. And step number four, reasoning. Reasoning involves developing a deep relationship with customer. It is considered the most difficult to attain, yet most desirable as a strong connection should be established through a peer, repeat purchase and active engagement and support. God, look the same like a loyal customer. So in order to get brand equity, you have to have four factors. Number one, brand identity. Number two, brand meaning. Number three, brand response. And number four, resonant or loyal customer. So I already read a technical term for you from the bottom to the top, resonant. I hope when you see my YouTube, you can read one more time by yourself, okay? So now come to the topic today, talking about the price, okay? The price related to consumer perception, okay? So 
Let's see. In this study, we review Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein is the famous one that his study focused on the price perception model and apply it to particular product context. Okay. So what he studied? Price introduction. Price arguably one of the most important marketplace. Q is a pivotal consumption variable because of it present in virtually every purchasing situation. This is how also defined about the price. And what is the price perception? Price perception is the process by which consumer translate price into meaningful mental cognition and has interested researcher for several decades. So price perception is the process by which consumer translate a price into meaningful mental cognition. This is a price perception. How do they feel about that price? Perception, how do they think about that price? Okay, so let's move on. So there are a lot of words in relating to price perception. First, that's called value consciousness. Okay, in perception, a lot of word in perception, technical term in perception. First is value consciousness. It's a perception of the price queue for some consumer can be categorized by a concern with the appropriateness or fairness of the ratio of perceived quality receipt and price paid in a project transaction. It means what they expect and what they get from that product. Is it reasonable? That's called value consciousness. This is the price perception number one. Price perception number two, price consciousness. The first one, value consciousness. The second one, price consciousness. Related to value consciousness, it continues us from value consciousness. Perception of price can be characterized more narrowly as reflecting price consciousness. Focus on the price. The value, I mean, what they get, is it a reasonable to the price they pay, the money they pay, and the price consensus mean focus on the price. Is the price quite high or is the price quite low? So the price consensus has been used in different researchers to refer to a variety of price-related cognition. Okay. This is a price consensus number two, key term number two, number three. Related to price conception. Number three, coupon proneness about the promotion. So most of the time stores still use this until now. They give you a paper with a picture of each stuff. When you go back to buy one more time, just bring the picture, you will get discount. That's called coupon proneness. So another word related to price perception, related to coupon proneness. In some like I explained just a moment ago. Okay. And the fourth, sale proneness. So actually coupon proneness in the sale or sale promotion, the same thing, okay? Similar to coupon proneness, sale prominent or sale promotion suggests that for some consumer and increase sensitive to price is related to the price being in sale form. That is discount form, the regular selling price. Okay, discount by one, get one free, buy two, get one free, something like that. So coupon proneness, as well as sale promotion, it's in the same meaning. It's called sale promotion, okay? And the fifth, price melvanism. What is price melvanism? Price perception may also be influenced by the consumer desire to be informed about prices. In order to pass such information on to other people, so they also define price mechanism as the degree to which an individual is a source for price for price information for many kind of product and for places to shop for the lowest price, initiated discussion with consumer and respond to requests from consumer for marketplace price information. So price mechanism before customer buy something they have to do searching the price information with other consumer with other related that 
ever went to the store before or check the price in the Google. Comparing the same product, different store. What is the different price? That's called price men mechanism or try to get more information before buying decision. Okay, so we have five. Five technical terms refer to price perception. Okay, now let's go to factor positively affecting the price perception. Okay. Price quality schema. So price is often interpreted by the consumer as being positively correlated to quality. High price indicate higher quality. That's called price quality schema. Easy to understand, right? And another one. Prestige sensitivity. Price perception also influenced by what the price signal to other people about the purchaser. Okay. Prestige sensitivity is associated with variable perception of price based on the feeling of prominence and status that higher price signal to other people about the purchaser. I buy that product, I want to show I'm rich. I buy Alexa because people in Cambodia tell rich people must have Alexa, something like that. That's called prestige sensitivity, making that consumer buying their products. So what is the difference between prestige sensitive and the first one talking about a, a sale promotion about brand mechanism? Okay, oh, price quality schema. The price quality schema, I mean that like uh, uh, price is often interpreted by consumer as being positively correlated to quality. Compare their money with the quality of the products or food. That's called price quality schema. Okay. And this positive relation of price and quality is referred to as price quality schema. Compare what they get the quality of what they get product or service to the money they expend. But the second one is prestige sending. I buy the product because I want to show you I have a high social status. Prestige sensitivity also refer to high perception. Okay. And what about the internal reference price? The internal reference price, it relates to focal Q, focal Q, are the stimuli that EMU is directly responding to such as the price. Internal reference price refer to back call Q are the stimuli the EMU is directly responding to such as the price. That's called internal reference price. Okay. So internal reference price. Internal in our thinking is influenced by the range of normal prices and the range of lower prices as a consumer perceived to exist in the marketplace. In addition to internal reference price range and the latitude of the price acceptance. This is called internal reference price. Is influenced by the range of normal prices and the range of lower prices. The lower to the normal, the range, a consumer perceived to exist in the marketplace. The internal reference price range and the latitude of the price acceptance. That's called internal reference prices. Comparing the lower price to the normal price, not the higher price. There is a significant body of literature to support the notion that individuals make judgment and choice based on comparison of observed phenomena to an internal reference price. Okay. Now, objective study. Now go to the framework. What is the framework of the study in order to to express the price perception? So we have from the beginning technical term value consciousness, price consciousness, sale proneness, price quality schema prestige sensitivity, and internal reference. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six factors that affect the price perception. 
Okay, so they create the assumption number one. The higher the level of value consciousness, the lower the level of price perception. The higher the level of value consciousness from number one, the lower the level of the price perception. The second hypothesis, the higher the level of price consciousness, the second factor, the lower the level of price perception. The third, the higher the level of sale proneness, the lower the level of the price perception. What is the lower level of price perception? Price perception. It means it doesn't care about the price because of those factors. Hypothesis number four, the higher the level of price quality schema, the higher the level of the price perception. Number five, number six, hypothesis number six, the higher the level of internal reference price, the lower the level of the price perception. And the last one, hypothesis number seven, the model including internal reference price with the author, the scholar, Lichen Stan is significantly better fit to the data than Lichen model alone. So the main, there are six factors that affect price perception. What customer think about that price before making decision buying that products or services? There are six factors in there, six factors, okay? So what's the result? So I already read the, explain the definition of each word already. When students come back to watch my clip, so read on your own one more time. What is the value consciousness? What is the price consciousness? What is the sale proneness? What is the price quality schema? What is the prestige sensitivityness? And what is the internal reference price? Internal from your body thinking. Okay, so it already explained, okay? Value consciousness, what is the value consciousness? Okay. Why look at one more time? Perception of the price Q for some consumer can be categorized by a concern with the appropriateness or fairness of the ratio perceived quality received and price paid in the purchase translation. This is called value consciousness. What I get is in a reasonable to the price I pay. That's what it means. Price consciousness relate to value consciousness. Perception of price can be categorized more narrow as reflecting the price consciousness. So focus on the price. The first one value comparing what they pay and what they get. And the second one focus on the price. Is it cheap or expensive? Something like that. This is a second factor. The third factor, coupon proneness, the fourth factor. The third the four coming to the sale proneness. So the stim the stimulus. It means uh, motivate a uh, consumer to buy, like doing a promotion, something like that. This is uh, the third factor related to price perception. And the fourth factor, what is that? The fourth factor is uh, not prime mechanism. Last moment, we don't show prime mechanism, but we show the price quality schema. What is the price quality schema? Price is often interpreted by the consumer as being positively correlated to quality. High price indicate higher quality. That's called price quality scheme in your in everybody thing like that. So that's why somebody do a business, the first start their product sell in a high price, expensive. In order to show that this is my price quality schema, you pay more, it means you get more quality. That's called price quality schema. The fourth factor, and the fifth factor was that prestige sensitivity. Prestige sanity, it means in order to show your status in, in the society, like uh, I buy Roy, I buy Lexa, I'm a rich man. But somebody rich, somebody not rich, save the most in the house, only focus on buying a Lexa in order to get prestige sensitivity. This is the fifth factor. And the sixth factor is the internal reference price. What is internal reference price? 
explained by the range of normal price and the range of lower price at the zoom of perceived to exist in the marketable. Compare from the lower price to the normal price. The internal reference price, range, and latitude of the price accepted. Okay. That's it. Comparing the lowest price and the normal price before making a decision to buy that one. Okay. Uh, the individual making judgment and choice based on comparison, the comparison of observed phenomena to an internal reference price. Internal reference price, comparing other price to what you are thinking supposed to be that product or service price. That's called internal reference price as a factor number C. Okay, from the model of framework. So now let's go to see the result. Jump to the result. Okay. Well now, now I read one more time about each factor for you that affect price perception. So the result, which one is affect the price perception? Let's take a look at the table number one, price perception. Okay. So we can see uh, consciousness here. Yeah. Hypothesis one to hypothesis number six. The sixth factor, only one factor that strongly affect to price perception. From this study is the higher the level of internal reference price, the lower the level of price perception. Okay, in indirect way. It means the more, the higher level of internal reference price, the less of price perception. This is the result. The less of price perception, what does it mean? So now you understand the word internal reference, they compare the normal price, the lower price to the normal price with what the price they are thinking. The more they compare, the less price perception. It means less, I mean, don't care too much about the price. Where they get the price they want, they just compare from the lower to normal, not expensive. See so how to make a decision in buying. They make a decision to buy that product or service right away because they just compare the price between the lower to the normal, not the expensive one. They don't expect the expensive one. Okay. This is the conclusion of the study. Only one, although the rest factor do not affect to price position at all from his study. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see at the conclusion. The conclusion is from that result table. Okay. The fit in this of our model suggested that internal reference price was a very relevant factor in influencing consumer price perception. From that result, this is a conclusion. Okay. The negative relation, just a moment, you see that negative sign with the coefficient, that's called negative relation. The negative relation between the internal reference price and overall price perception, which means that the higher, I, I translate just a moment, the higher consumer internal reference price to a specific product, the lower the consumer overall assessment of products. The lower, okay, assessment, uh, assessment the product benefit, mean that the higher consumer internal reference price for a specific product, the lower the consumer overall assessment of the product's benefit and monetary sacrifice. This is the conclusion. This is the interpretation of that result. One more time. Listen carefully. Okay. Uh, 
the higher the consumer internal reference price, they also explain internal reference price comparing the lowest price to the normal price. Okay, they said the higher the consumer internal reference price for a specific product, the lower the consumer overall assessment of products benefit and monetary sacrifice. I mean, spend less. This factor is very effective to price perception. It, does it make sense? Yes. People want to spend less to get quality product. This is the answer. The rest five factor does not affect the price perception at all. Imagine, is it make sense? Does it make sense? Yeah. People want to buy a cheap product with quality. It is. So this factor impact to the price perception. The most and the rest, no. So what can you apply with this study to your store, to your business? Try the best to find a good less cost supplier or cheap product which country around the world, if you do a business import export, to import good quality product with the cheap price and sell in your and sell and sell it. Or if you produce that product on your own, try to get the material, less cost material, and produce your product in order to compete with other other business in the industry. Cheap price but quality. This is what our, our giant economic country like China, Japan, America try to do it nowadays. So who can beat this theory? They can conquer the world market. This is in terms of the global market, but in the store, in the restaurant, try to do the same way. So find a good supplier with less cost supply and then you can sell it in a reasonable price that make customer design with your quality of food. Pay less, but I get a good quality of food or pay less, but I get a good quality product and services. This is the best challenge of each business nowadays. Now, my presentation come to the end. And student might go to take a look at my YouTube again to see all the letter in here. Because sometimes I keep it too long. You can read it on your own. Okay? So, sabadi kap. Bye bye. Chai chien ang yo. Thank you for friends around the globe come to listen to me. Now all of you in tropical area are very lately at night now. You're supposed to be uh, 2 o'clock a.m. now. Thank you for wasting time or uh, spend your time, not wasting time. You get the knowledge. Spend your time watching my life in Facebook and we will go on to my YouTube. Please press thumbs up, subscribe. Help me to reach 1,000. And then I will like in the YouTube. Thank you. Bye-bye. Chai chien pang yo. Sawadikrap. Chumri bli.